the Flash is their biggest restructure, even though, which which we'll get to, even though it it didn't answer ninety five percent of questions, okay, and of how it can look in the future. But James Gunn did say prior to this that this is the biggest reset that they they're going to have in in years, mm -hmm. right? Um, and that that first act okay just kind of showed us like his growth but also at the same time what i was gonna say also kind of showed us like his his that he's still not a vet in this game he's still not you know like a wonder woman or or a superman and they showed like a cut of superman you know what i'm saying doing this thing obviously <laughs> um saving a, a volcano oh, okay. uh, situation you know obviously not showing his his face in that um but like yeah that that first act was kind of like i guess setting the foundation of like what his timeline is currently like mm. you know um and i think that's all it done you know i i think all, all it done was for me was just show ben and i wanted to see that anyway and then they cut the rest of ben's scenes for the rest of the film <clears throat> it was um it was interesting seeing some of the reactions to this film prior to it actually coming out i think two, three months ago, we've seen Stephen King and Tom Cruise and loads of other journalists. There was like so many early previews, especially- From February. Especially in America. And all the reviews, if not most, were so uh, full of superlatives for The Flash as a film. Do you think it lived up to those no. superlatives? I think it was the most overrated screening. So it's not, so screening so it's, so it's not the best comic book film ever? No. Didn't think so. No, I don't think so. it's not. It's not a bad film. It's not a bad film. And maybe with, with this DC Cloud, it maybe it maybe dampened it like a little bit, right? But the clouds, you know, the weather changes and when the sun shines through. So like, it can happen. But I just, the hype was so there and I can't lie, maybe it was a marketing ploy because they couldn't actually have Ezra market the film, you know, and they couldn't have Ezra be around and, uh, do premieres and uh, he only did the one. I think he did the one they, main premiere and that was it. Yeah, they did the one main premiere. And that's it. Uh, yeah, that was it. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, literally one out of like I think we've done like nine or eight of them. Do you know what I mean? Like, like around the world and and they even were, they just, was only there for yeah. one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe maybe it was a PR and marketing plan. And if it was, and I was saying this to a friend yesterday that's in, in the game, obviously. I, I said to him, I said, it's genius, it's genius. They made me want to watch a film without seeing the main actor or even most of the cast do any promo. Right. And that's how stuck. I think I think their big thing was using Michael Keaton, which we'll get into maybe ever so slightly later on in the pod. Uh they use Michael Keaton as like the main crux of the of the uh, of the as the pool, yeah. And and you know what? It pulled it, it led me in. I, I would have watched this film anyway. I would have had no choice but um, he was, he, yeah, yeah. Michael Keaton's going to bring in generations of, of fans of, of Batman, let alone the modern era of fans of, of comic, book, comic book films as well. Um, By the way, loved his suit, as in Flash. Okay, yeah, we'll, okay. we'll get into maybe that sort of things a bit later. How did you feel about the the basic or the base of the plot of this film? Oh, this is this is where this is where I have to. This is my biggest issue. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. My biggest issue. <clears throat> I said this on the pod a year ago. It's one of my favorite social cards where I was talking about and I explained. I think Tom wasn't on the episode. I think we had Tom on this. And we were talking about the Flashpoint story and how it's one of my favorite stories of all time. You know? I think Jason has said similar as well. Yeah. And like when I was when I first started reading comics, yeah, like one of my first comics that I read was was like the Flashpoint comic book. And then when they when the TV series came out and they, they, they try to match it. Obviously, it's easier in a series because you can build it up over seasons. All right. You know what I mean? Okay, but like, which they, they, they try to match it. But I, I'm going to do like a really quick paraphrased rundown of this, okay? But the original storyline, okay, is obviously the same thing kind of what, what, what we get in the Flash movie is, um, you know, Barry uh, um, realizes that he can run to, to the point where he can use the speed force, um, which is essentially like an, an entry point into the multiverse, you know, um, and then he can go into the, he, he can use the speed force, you know, to go into this dome and turn back and control time and walk into other, um, uh, universes. Now, the difference between the between the multiverse in the MCU and the and the multiverse in DC is the multiverse in the a MCU is controlled by kind of like uh, sp it's controlled by space and then time as a secondary. Whereas in the DC uh, universe, it's controlled by time and space. Sp it, space is secondary. Right. You know. So um, and it makes it super interesting, right? So in the comic book, um, Barry. I, I, um, he 
realizes that he can go he can he can go back in time save his mom from passing away etc etc et and then uh when he does that when he goes back in time he bumps into who we meet in this film Salvatore, uh who is like uh, who obviously we end up finding out is a younger version of, of Barry, Barry that of Barry. he corrupts that because of the interference that he makes he corrupts this this um Barry because the Barry does, he doesn't grow up to be as mature as this guy blah 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 um he is scarred by Kryptonian weapons and that stuff that puts him in constant pain but he doesn't feel the pain because he's in, he's in the speed force you know what I mean so because he's in the speed force he's not in reality so there's no pain right you know um and so he creates this evil now and now what makes it super interesting is that Savator um in the comic books is 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 an is like a is like a speed force police officer he's stuck in a constant loop where he has attacks anyone that enters the speed force mainly Barry right, right? so every time so when Barry and you see this in TV series he bans a, a, a anyone from going into the speed force because it can create it can uh, Savator can, can, can find him and locate him and come and hunt him down and that kind of stuff what we tend to find out, which, which we didn't find out in this film, which I was really upset about, or because it felt like a DC film. Which is, which is, which is, this is gonna sound really stupid. It, it felt like a DC homage film, not a Flash film. And it, that was really upsetting for me because the Flashpoint storyline is centered around a thorn, which is a, which is technically re, 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 um, reverse Flash. And reverse Flash is again created by Barry in a different uh, universe and reverse flash we find out is the one that actually kills Barry's mum and the fucked up thing is is that Re um, reverse flash hates Barry because he finds out that Barry started the loop by him going, into by going back in time yeah. and doing that he started the loop so he created Savator he created reverse flash from this different universe okay reverse flash I was saying then realizes that to uh, to to kill Barry for what he's done, he kills his mum. He kills Barry's mum, mm -hmm. Barry's version, which is. B but then what he realizes is that after does that is that that mother is both their mums. Mm. So the loop continues. It's a continuous loop. So the murderer is Barry. Even in the by the end of the comic book, he even realizes that he's cradled this. Mm -hmm. But there's no start. There's no finish. It's middle and middle. Right. It's fate. P people like it makes no sense because wouldn't he just not kill his mom to stop the loop? No, because the re the reverse flash was trying to kill his mom to kill Barry from ever being born. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you relate that to what you saw in in the film though? If they didn't show the murderer, it gives me hope that maybe they are exploring a reverse flash um, in Flash Two. Okay. You know, if Ezra stays. Or if he's not fired, you know. they. Um, that's one. Um, it felt like an unfinished story. The plot was weak. The plot was weak because it. Why was, do you think the plot was weak? Because the plot wasn't centered around Flash. And as a, I think, oh, maybe, maybe I'm being. You biased. don't think it was centered? I, I, I disagree with you. I would say it is centered around the Flash. It's centered around the Flash and his love for his mother, and then the secondary aspect is his. His, uh, his father. His desire to free his father, right? Correct. Prove his father's innocence. Correct. The, the main thing for him, though, was the dynamic and relationship he had with his mother, which I think, in aspects, was one of the stronger parts of this film. Yeah. In 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 aspects, my issue is my issue is I think the mother's performance was stronger than Ezra's in that aspect, in terms of the loving nature and the dynamic between. She the made two. it emotional, definitely. Um, I think Ezra struggled to really depict that emotional trauma. There were moments it worked, and there were other moments it didn't. So it, it moments, there were times where it hit for me, and there were times where it didn't. I think, I think you're right. I think that speaks to, unfortunately, no disrespect to their acting skills, but it speaks to Ezra's. There's a there's a cap to what I think his level is. As a, their their level is sorry, I keep making that same mistake. And my apologies. Their level is as an actor, mm. and I I that then goes to my point about is is Ezra strong enough to be a lead in this film? And and the worst thing was we had to have two versions of. Of Ezra in the film, or two versions yeah. of Harry. Sorry, so, shall I say? And what, what's crazy is, I think DC in the credits called called him Prime Barry, called uh, okay. So uh, <clears throat> or, 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 or Prime Flash, okay, uh, and Young Flash. So it's just like even those terms 
when you like when you hear them you think okay um and by the way guys if i if i do say he it's in relation to flash right oh, yeah, yeah um but yeah like you know it's it's like when you see when you see when you see him like kind of talking to himself right but you just have a version of, of, him, right? version of himself okay i actually gained more respect for him you know i actually thought his character grew in that situation because he's he's less jokey he's more serious he's still funny you know oh there was there was the, the humor in this film at the, the humor again, was fantastic, hit and miss bro. for me it was hit and the miss. humor was fantastic i was i was on a hit and miss there was times bro that time where the where running, he was in the courthouse and, and, and he slowed and, and yeah. running, that bad. was the funniest shit bro i've seen sort of so long one of the funniest movie. moments in a comedy film for quite some time for me. yeah, yeah that really, was, really that was hilarious and he tried to face through the wall. <laughs> <football. laughs> yeah. that was so funny like yeah. like, like, like people like phoenix people were crackling up no it was it was there was some good moments in there and there was some other times again where it was uh, but I liked I liked I liked this scene.